Hey guys, welcome back to Wheel Work. I trust you're doing well as always. So as you can see, I've got Des up on the hoist behind me because uh, today we're going to be doing uh, two or three, depending how we go for time, uh, small-ish uh, mechanical mods to the car. Um, so first of all, the, what we're going to start with is we're going to fit a transmission cooler. Uh, so the reason why I'm fitting a transmission cooler is transmission coolers um, are very beneficial to transmissions. They lower um, the operating temperature of your transmission. One of the biggest killers of transmissions is heat. So yes, they do have a um, factory transmission cooler that sits in the bottom tank of the radiator. Uh, so we're just gonna piggyback off that and fit a, um, a large transmission cooler to the front of the car. So I'll give you a look, see uh, what we are gonna be using to do that. So this is the cooler I have here. I bought this transmission cooler about 18 months ago. I was gonna put it on a car that I was gonna build into a burnout car, but then didn't end up eventuating. So I've got that sitting here. You can buy transmission cooler kits um, that just bolt onto these cars. Um, I think the kits that you buy actually use the physical, the, the cooler they use is physically the same one as this, which is a PWR cooler um, but I had this one so I'm just going to make up my own brackets to make that fit we've also got some transmission cooler hose and some hose clamps and we've got some genuine Toyota fluid to top the transmission up with once we're done so I'm going to start by taking the under tray off and seeing how I go for room um, and also I'll take the, the top cover off um, behind the grill there to see how I go for uh, room to see if I can make this work um, with the room that I've got. And if it's not gonna be enough, I'll just pull the front bar off. So we'll get into it and have a look. Just on a side note, I was worried that this car wouldn't fit on the hoist um, now that the platform roof is installed um, because it came very close to that center beam um, before without it. But looking side on with the car exactly on the hoist where I need it, it's just gonna clear <laughs> that beam anyway. So yeah, that's cool. Okay, so I've jumped the gun a little bit. I've gone ahead and taken that tray off the bottom there so I can sort of see what's going on. And I've actually ended up tapping in to the factory cooler already. So that pipe there, that hose, um, that normally just has a little squiggly hose that goes from there straight to the bottom of the radiator fitting there. This is on the driver's side. So it normally just has this little hose there. So I've just grabbed the length of transmission cooler hose and intercepted into there sort of run the hoses back and cable tie them up out of the way and snuck them through above this rail here and the bottom of the radiator. And they just sort of loops together. So then I'll end up just cutting them to length once the cooler's mounted and putting them on. So yeah, just jumps ahead a little bit and they'll just tuck up behind the front bumper bar up in there somewhere. So yeah, I'm going to drop the car down now, take the top cover off and see how I'm going for room. Because uh, I still don't know if I want to pull the front bar off yet. Just going to pull this top cover off now. Super, super simple. These little clips here, you just push the center of them in. It's as easy as that. Once you push the center in, you can just grab the clip and they just pop right off. To reset the clip, just push the bottom of it back through. You can just push it down or something or push it back through, back through with your finger and they're ready to go. So do that with all those trims, with all those clips, and that top cover will come off. All right, so got a little bit carried away again. <laughs> So basically, um, I took the top cover off. Uh, then there's two brackets that sort of run forward to the top of the grill. They just sort of look like that. Just held on with a 10 mil bolt each side. I took them off and then I thought, well, I'll pop the grill out and have a look. So I've done that. Uh, you just got to unclip the chrome molds that go above the headlights. They just literally just pull forward and unclip. And then once you do that, the grill comes out. You just got to unplug the radar, which is on the back there. Just, just that one plug. And then that just clips out from the bottom as well and that comes out. So I'm hoping now I've got enough room to do what I need to do. Okay, I've just given myself a little bit more room here. I've just unbolted the horns, which is sort of bolt on there and there with 12 mil bolts and just flick them up on top of the bonnet latch there just to give myself a bit more room to get my hands down in there. And the other thing I've done is the ambient air temperature sensor, which is that guy right there in the middle of the screen. That was in that hole just above it. Um, so it was sort of getting in the way a little bit. So. I've just literally unclipped it and clipped it into the hole, which is lower down. And I've cable tied the wiring down there as well. So that gives me a little bit more room to work. So that's good. So now I'm gonna just try and 
figure out how I'm going to get the cooler mounted. I mean, we've got multiple nut, spare nut certs and bolts that we can pick up off to make brackets off to sort of mount it. So I don't think I'll bore you too much with that. I might just sort of get into it. And once the cooler's mounted, I'll show you how I've done it. Okay, so after a bit of fluffing about, this is what I've come up with. So I've just made a little standoff bracket for there. Goes down to there. I've put the bolts through back from the back to the front because I didn't want the end of the bolt to get too close to the intercooler. So that's why I've done that. I've just put an eight mil bolt, drilled a small hole in that upright of the bonnet latch support and put a bolt through there. So that picks up on that. Then looking down the bottom, so I'm getting a bit of light in there. So I've made another standoff bracket that goes through the hole on the upright. That was the original hole that the ambient temperature sensor clipped into. Is now what that bolt's going through. And then that goes down on an angle. Let's see if you can look through the front here and sort of goes down, there's a bolt going through there. Um, so I've got three out of four corners done. I haven't put anything on the other side. These transmission coolers weigh three fifths of stuff all. I think three mounts are gonna be more than enough. If you think it needs four, <laughs> then feel free to put four if you do this to your car, but probably would have been a lot easier and a lot simpler if I just got the um, a whole kit, but you know, had this cooler, so this is what I've done. I've gone ahead and connected the hoses and fed them through. So I'm just gonna go through, put, uh, put a bit of insulation or something on those hoses now, just to stop any chafing or anything that might happen. Uh, then we'll start it up and top up the transmission level. Uh, but first, um, I'm gonna go through and put the grill and everything back together. So that's how it all looks all back together. You can just sort of see it hiding away down in there. Looks pretty good, plenty of airflow, plenty of room all around it. I've put some conduit on the hoses to stop any chafing. So now we will just top up the transmission and then that job is done. All right, to check transmission all level in these, you have a drain plug on the back of their transmission pan and a fill plug with an Allen head bolt next to it. I'm talking a bit loud so you can try and hear me over their cars idle. Um, you want to check the transmission oil temperature when the car is at operating temperature, uh, which I've done. And as the car got up to operating temperature, it decided to start doing a DPF burn which is why it's idling high, but that's fine. That's not gonna affect us in checking the transmission level. So what you wanna do is take that fill plug out, uh, and then you can, I've got a little tool that goes in there. You fill it up from there basically until it starts coming back out. So I've got this little hand pump here, which is going into the genuine fluid bottle. And that hose is a real tight fit up into that hole. So we're gonna pump some oil into it. You'd only need about a liter. Don't think it's gonna need any more than that. We'll pull the hose out and let the excess dribble out. Alright, so I fill that up now, we'll pull this hose out. Just want to let that drain for a little bit. Once you see it sort of start to calm down, you can go ahead and bang the plug back in. And there we go, now it's starting to start and just get a little bit of a drizzle. Go ahead and put that plug back in. Clean down, a bit of cleaner. And of course, nip up the bolt. That job done. Beautiful, that job is all done, all finished. I've just taken the car for a quick drive and double checked the fluid level when I got back and it's all sweet. So on to the next job while I've got it on the hoist. The next job I want to do is fit a diff breather kit. So this kit was actually given to me. Yeah, I know I've got a lot of stuff either hanging around or that's been handed on. But anyway, this kit was given to me by a good mate of mine uh, that bought for his four wheel drive, but then ended up selling it and not using it. So he's handed all that to me. I do think these kits are fairly cheap. They're around a hundred bucks. Um, so in case anyone's wondering what a diff breather kit is, so differentials, Transmissions, transfer cases, all of that stuff, they all run diff breathers. Uh, on this car, it is that little dook right there. So that lets any excess pressure inside the transmission uh, escape through there. Um, modern cars, the standard breathers are actually pretty good. They're not as bad as what they were on older cars, but what you can happen, what can happen is 
if you're going through water crossings and stuff and it is uh, you know, above that breather, you can get moisture ingress into the diff, uh, which does affect your diff oil and stuff like that. So this kit, um, I don't even know how many breathers this has in it, uh, but we'll open it up and have a look and we'll see what we're doing. Factory breather is out. I've already fitted one of them into the top of the diff. Sort of like that. So now I'll start running this tube or pipe, hose, whatever you want to call it. And I'll start running that up towards the front of the car. All right, so got the rear diff hose run. It sort of all goes up above the rail, sort of tucks in all behind there, goes above the fuel tank, runs along, and it's just sort of hanging out in this back corner for now till I mount the block. The next one I'm doing is the front diff breather, which is just down there. You can see the hose there. I've just pulled the, goes to that spot from factory. And there's just a push-in breather, so sort of similar setup to the rear, but it's got like this push-in fitting like that. So I'm just gonna extend it and run it to that back corner as well. So it'll be both the front and rear diff breathers will be sitting back there. All right, so I've got those two hoses sitting up there, They're all cable tied up, I've just gotta trim them down. I've got this block ready to go. Um, I've just got the two fittings on that side, I've blocked off those two. So they all go on there. I'm just gonna stop at the front and rear diff. And the reason why is because I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but sort of down there, sitting on right in the middle of the screen, there's a couple of hoses there, and that's actually the transmission and the transfer case breather, and they sort of go up to like back of the cylinder head type area. So even if I move them um, over here, I'm only gonna increase the height of them, you know, 50 mil maybe. So there's not really much point. So if I wanna extend them later on, I can. I've still got the two fittings on the side there. Um, but for now, I'm just going to leave it as that. So I'll get that all mounted and finished up. And that's another little job done. Front and rear diff breathers are completed. On to the next. Right, yo, so the last job I want to do today is I want to fit an engine oil catch can. So this one is by Terra Tough through Process West. I buy quite a lot of Process West stuff for customers' cars. Even better if I can not drop the stuff on the ground. So... This kit comes with a couple of hoses, a couple of stickers as standard. Uh, it's got this um, aluminium, cast aluminium bracket. Hose clamps and fittings. Then under here we have the actual catch can, which is that there. So how this works basically is inside here, there is a little metal gauze filter so how how these things work basically is you have excess um crankcase ventilate ventilation pressure comes through this pipe here that comes out of your rocker cover and any excess pressure goes back through your intake uh, and then sucks back through the inlet manifold problem is um microscopic oil droplets also pass through this and it does give you like an oily film inside your intake inside the intercooler and all of that stuff uh, and eventually can cause gunking up. Um, so basically we delete this hose here. There's a hose that goes from the rocker cover into one of the bottom fittings of the catch can. And then another fitting goes on there and it goes back to the intake. So any excess oil droplets will accumulate in the bottom of this. Uh, there is a little drain plug that goes in the bottom of that. And there's also a sight glass in the side so you can see when it's getting full. And you can actually unscrew this lid and you can pull the filter inside out for, for cleaning if you wanted to clean that too. And that just sort of comes out like that. So what we'll do is we'll get this plastic engine cover off. We'll get that um, standard hose off and then we'll go from there. Okay, so engine cover is off and so is that hose. So you can see we're connected down there and on there. I've assembled the oil catch counter, put all the fittings on it. Uh, so it's not actually a sight glass that goes on the side there, I told you a lie. It's actually a pressure relief valve. So um, if this thing gets too full and starts building up too much pressure or whatever, uh, there's a little valve there with a spring that lets um, excess pressure out. So it's a bit of a safety thing. So now we'll get to mounting this bracket. So we'll get that on now and show you how that looks. Bracket's on. All well and good. So picks up off the two, there's two holes I can't really see the other one, but 
there's two holes, you can see that bolt down there in the center of the screen that goes through to the inner wheel arch, the factory holes there. Uh, and there's another one here for that bolt. Um, that one was slightly off on my car. Um, I don't know if the facelift fortune is a little bit different, uh, but I just ended up drilling a hole about 10 mil to the right of where it was. But that's all on now. So we'll get the catch can in there and bolt it in. We'll get the hoses on and I'll show you how it looks all done. And that's job done. Everything's all back together. Everything all looks good. Everything's all in. So yeah, another job finished. And there you have it guys, just a few sort of relatively straightforward mechanical mods uh, to this thing done, um, just for my peace of mind, uh, that I think will help out in the long run. So yeah, unfortunately I do have a little bit going on, uh, a little bit of personal stuff over the next couple of weeks, uh, as well as a very full work schedule. So I probably won't be doing too much more to this thing over the next couple of weeks. Um, but all that is sort of left on the build of this car is the sort of relatively big stuff. So things that when you do them, they make quite big aesthetical change, aesthetical? Sure, changes to the car. Uh, it's the stuff that I've been looking forward to the most to do to it as well. Uh, so I am pretty excited to get those um, few things done. Uh, we are more than halfway through doing the mods to this car now, so um, that's also a good thing. And we've managed to smash out quite a bit of it um, in the course of the last month or so. So yeah, so that's that. But thanks always for watching, guys. Uh, just remember, if you like what you see, please remember to like and subscribe. Uh, be good to yourselves, stay safe, and I will catch you in the next video very soon. Thanks again.